Hey guys, it's World Class R. Carlos, back for a review of the IS-3 Defender, the Tier 8 Russian Premium Heavy Tank. This came out about two months ago on Blitz. Uh, you had to do a lot of missions to get it, or you had to pay for it. And it just, uh, it's overall a really good tank. It's not worth the money because you could have earned it. There are a lot of people who go around driving this tank that really don't deserve it and really don't do it justice. So I'm here to show you how to do some proper angling, some, some proper uh, some proper side scraping and reverse side scraping, and putting this tank in a situation where it's going to succeed almost almost all the time over its counterparts. Now what you're going to want to do right here, every time you start the match, you're going to want your am ammunition loadout just uh, ready to go. You just need to tap that little that arrow button and get the whole ammunition out there because if you need to if you're in a situation where you need premium ammo or you need you need high explosive ammo you're gonna want that ammo loadout right there for you and not have to press it and then have to find your target again after that so we're setting ourselves up here at an angle where when the heavies cross here they're going to not have any shots at my weak pike nose because that's the problem with the IS-3 it has three positions where it can be pinned pretty reliably on the front. So what you're going to want to do is present an angle, as you can see right here, where the side armor is angled 90 millimeters at an angle that causes it to be just ridiculous numbers. I mean, right there, even if they hit the track at 235, it's going to be absorbed. So you're getting numbers that even 300 millimeter penetration guns are not going to be able to, to pin reliably. Um, again, in tier 9 games, you're going to have to be worried about that. Uh, right here, again, you're this is reverse side scraping where you're pointing the back of your tank toward the wall to give your front of your tank more of an opportunity to get the gun out there. So you can see the back is covered by the wall and they're only seeing the side armor. So we're going to look back at tanksgg.com to see some of the armor values. Here are some of the armor values. You get something like 597 and 336 toward the, the back of the tank. Even toward that weak frontal part of the tank where the drive wheel is, it's it's just ridiculous. But you don't want to expose the back of your tank. The the rear armor is only 60 millimeters of armor, and people can put HE rounds through that like no tomorrow. If you get that armor exposed, and there's like a tier 9 T30, uh, he can easily pen you with HE, and you're just going to lose a chunk of hit points for no reason. As we come up here, another good instance, we're covering the front of our, our tank to the point where we're wiggling back and forth. They're having a really hard time to to pin the front of the tank because it's at an angle where they're only seeing the side armor, and the side armor values are close to close to 300, close to 290. It just gets to a point where they, can, they can't pin it, and what you want to want to do is go back and forth and take advantage of the people and try to track people out in the open to the point where they can't. They can't exploit just coming around and, and taking advantage of your pike nose because your pike nose is extra weak. Now, as we're coming up here on uh, Middleburg, I'm going to show you how to go hull down and use advantage of the 290-some armor on the turret of this uh, tier 8. Now, as you come here, you're using that hill to block the the weaker part of the pike nose, which is angled right now towards them. And when you put the tank onto the hill and angle it upward, you get ridiculous numbers that, again, 300 millimeters of penetration do not reliably pin that right there, as you can see. You're pushing the tank up to a point where they can't pin you reliably, especially tier 8 mediums. They have they struggle a lot with that. Now what you do is you, when you're reloading, you push the pike nose onto the hill and you wait until they fire their shot. You come back and you shoot and you push right back onto the hill. Gives uh, you an advantage to dish out 400 damage rolls reliably and not take 200 in return. Another good hull down location is anytime you're looking down you want to make sure that they can't see your lower glacis because your lower glacis is the weakest part of the tank. Some values here, front 110, sides 90, again rear, worst part of the tank, turret armor, ridiculous, 250, but it's curved pretty much everywhere. Only problem you want to look out for is the top of the tank being only 30 millimeters on the front. Shell damage, you're going to get 380 rolls pretty, pretty uh, 
pretty much standard. It's got a decent penetration, terrible aim time, and an awful dispersion. You do not want to be firing this thing on the move unless you have to. Decent view range. You can run this thing with optics. Uh, the loading speed is good. The only problem is the magazine loading speed is pretty abysmal. If you get caught out when you're loading your magazine by a TD or any tier 9 heavy, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, the high explosive anti-tank ammunition is really low pin, especially when you're going up against uh, tier tier nine heavies. It just it's it's a problem sometimes. Um, at this point, what you really need to do is you need to put this thing in a situation where it's going to succeed because the IS three defender is pretty much the strongest heavy that's going to be out there. Um, the base IS three I think is better because it has the chance to use the the reloading ammunition uh, consumable, which helps it load faster. Um, this one, it, it can dish out the damage and it can take the punishment, but only when you put it in the right scenario. What you want to do is you want to run those consumables. You want to run milk, improved rations, and improved fuel. Don't run protective kit. It's not worth it. Uh, you don't really want to load too much heat because the normalization kills this tank. You want to load enough HE to have one clip so you can deal with light tanks. Uh, you want to run vents, you want to run uh, enhanced gun lane drive and V-stabs. Again, if you don't mind the aim time of this tank, I would run optics, but the aim time is pretty abysmal at 3.4 seconds. Uh, running that with uh, enhanced gun lane drive brings that down a little bit. So, we're moving into a game on Port Bay. I am top tier, and I'm facing off against one heavy and three mediums, so obviously... You're going to want to go to the side with the river because mediums on this map love to take the river and plus left is pretty much the most advantaged place on the map. It's got two uh, lookout spots that you can look into town and over the port and really is just the place you want to be going each time. What we're going to do is we're going to go and exploit the fact that most of their mediums are going to try to take the place next to the river and we're going to use the fact that many of their many of their team is mediums and not heavies and the fact that they're not going to push into this this uh, lookout position spot to my right so we come down low giving an angle to anybody who's going to shoot us if they had gotten there early we put ourselves in a hold down position right here and we wait and what this gives is a chance to hide the lower glacis and present a ridiculous target to anybody who's firing back we catch this T44 unaware he uses the one position on the map that you can't shoot from this point, and he cowers there for just a little while. Uh, case in point, with the bad aim time coming up in just a little while, I look to my right to check if see if anybody's coming out. 44 comes back out. Dispersion absolutely fucks me, and I basically miss my shot. Uh, 44 is pretty much playing terribly here. It lets me get another shot in for no no punishment in return. He's not firing premium ammo right now, but even if he was, it wouldn't be a guaranteed pin at this point because he's firing at an angle where he cannot hit my lower plate, and not only my upper plate is presented to him, and when I poke out, it is constantly angled at an angle that's giving him at least 250 plus of, uh, of armor penetration that he's going to need. The Ice 3 Defender is popping down low, which you don't want to do. You don't ever want to go into the riverbed, no matter who you are. Uh, you get taken up advantage of there. Defender comes out. I pop one right into his pike nose that is angled toward me, which makes it weaker. I try to do another one of those, but it hits the outside pike and auto bounces. And that's the problem with the gun. If you're on the move, if you move at all, it's just, it's not gonna, it's not gonna aim enough. I could have pinned that, but I hit his turret right next to his gun. Um, my backup right here, as you can see, the T-44 is firing at me, but we're still hull down. Even though the pike nose is pointed a bit towards him on the left, he's not pinning it because it is just at an angle, which, again, is presenting just ridiculous numbers to him. And for that poor pin that the T-44 has for that tier, he's just not going to pin me. I track him here in the hopes that he doesn't have a repair kit. He does. Uh, and right now, he decides it's probably better not to poke in front of someone who has a 400 damage alpha. Um... Another case in point with the bad uh, aim time. He uh, he makes a bad mistake here. He he could have really been punished for this. He pokes out. I could have put one right through that drive wheel, but the aim time is just too much. 
if I was a medium tank, I could have potentially done something with that. Now, my thoughts were right here to push up, try to put one into him, come around, and deal with the IS-3 from the bottom, but I have put myself in a crossfire here. The 44, again, he's too scared to come out and take that damage from me. The Rudy's got caught in the river basin again. The Rheumatol Borsig's not using the big gun, so he obviously misses. Put an HE shell right through his gun mantlet, which is weak as pretty much paper. You always want to be firing HE at the new TD line, except for the Stirrer Emil. That one has some weird armor. You're only going to be able to pin the bottom with that. So I put my ro this rock in between the T-44 and me, so he cannot shoot me. And I am only going to be in the line of sight of the Ramital Borsig, who is not got enough gun depression at that point. And at this point, we're going to rush the Rudy, because he does not have enough pen to reliably pin my front. And if we rush him, he could make mistakes, which he's about to. He doesn't realize I'm coming up on him until about right now. Uh, I pop one right through his front, and he's gone. And the Nomad is the only one left. So as you can see, we're using hold-down tactics to really make the most of this this tank because this tank even though it has what appears like weak side armor it really is just a ridiculous side scraping hold down monster that can pump out 400 damage within 7.5 seconds pretty easily you want to play it to its strengths and that's always what you're going to want to do this tank's fast it can get into weak spots and you're going to want to really really attack with force i hope you enjoyed this review and i hope you'll like and subscribe uh, make sure to comment what you guys want to review on next uh, we'll see you out there on the battlefield thank you